In the last video, we introduced market making from a high level perspective. The goal of this was to show the fundamental value proposition behind the market making business. In this video, we dive deeper into some of the mechanics behind how market makers perform their trading strategies. For this, we once again go back to the concept we introduced in the first video of this section of fairs. A market maker typically always has a fair price for the product that they are making markets for. As we saw in the video on fares, this fair value estimate can be based on many factors. One very simple fair value estimate could simply be the mid price or last traded price of a product. This might seem oversimplified, but it actually can be sensible, especially if you have a very highly liquid security with a minimum spread and you do not have any special information, simply using the mid price can make sense. Note that this mid price does not necessarily have to be the fair value estimate for the same product. For instance, if you want to price an illiquid ETF, you could simply use the mid price of a future tracking the same basket, especially if this future is much more liquid. Alternatively, market makers can and often do also have more complex models to compute their fare. For factors potentially influencing the fare, go and watch the video on fares at the beginning of this section. Once a market maker has a sensible fare for a product, they make markets around this fare, which basically means they offer bids below this and offers above it on a relatively constant basis. If everything works out well, the market maker then earns a small profit through the spread at a high frequency and thereby ends up with a profit overall. To illustrate this further, let's step through an example sequence of trades from a market maker's perspective. For this, consider this order book of the hypothetical stock and imagine you are the market maker. Currently, there are two bids, one for $87 with a volume of 2 and one other bid for $45 with a volume of 200. Furthermore, the best ask is $130 with a size of 3. Then someone else is offering 10 for a price of $155 and lastly 2 for $160. Note that the order book could be deeper, but we don't see this in this view. Further, let's assume your sophisticated model outputs a fair value of $100 for this product and we assume this does not change throughout this video. You also currently have a cash position of $1000 and no open stock position. So far you did no trades, so your P&L is $0. Notice how there is a very wide spread of $53 for this product at the moment. Further. Remark that your fair price is between the best bid and best ask price since your fair price is $100. Since you are a designated market maker for this security, we assume you are mandated to provide much tighter spreads. Since you are very confident in your fair value calculation and the stock is known to be very stable, you put in an offer for 10 shares at $101. This puts you at the top of the order book on the offer side. Furthermore, you put in a bid for $99 for 10 shares. We now see that you are at the top of the order book on both sides and the spread is now reduced to only $2. Note that this is a much better situation for other market participants since the spread is a direct cost for other traders wanting to quickly enter and exit their positions and we see a market maker just reduce this cost from $53 to only $2. Furthermore, from the market maker's perspective, it is desirable to be at the top of the order book as long as you are still planning in enough safety margin to make it worthwhile. The reason for this is that being at the top of the order book means that the next trades that occur where someone crosses the spread will hit your orders and you can earn a profit. Thus market makers typically compete for this spot in the order book by providing tighter spreads in competitive products. In the next step, now another market participant steps in and wants to tell two shares of the stock for $99. This now hits your $99 bid and your bid order gets executed with a volume of 2. That leaves 8 shares remaining on this bid. Your position changes well as the size sitting in the order book updates. Now you are long 2 shares of the stock and have $198 less in cash as you paid twice $99 and thus your cash position is now reduced to $802. Let's say some time passes and another participant comes in and bids $105 for 3 shares. Once again, since you are at the top of the order book, your sell order is hit 
and your position updates. Note that the buyer here actually gets a better price of $101 than the price of $105 that they would have been willing to pay for. We now are short one share of the stock, however at the same time we have actually just realized a $4 profit since in the previous trade we bought two shares at $99 and now sold two shares for $101. Last but not least, let's consider another market participant wanting to sell one share of this stock. Similar as before, our bid is hit and we buy the share for $99. This actually fully neutralizes our position and we now have $6 more in realized profit compared to the beginning. To quickly recap, where does the money come from or what value did we just add to earn this money? Well, we just matched different buyers and sellers through time and size and we took on the risk of the asset moving in price in between. Receiving a small premium for such a service does seem reasonable. Note that here we step through these different trades one by one, which is actually a reasonable approximation of how things happen in reality. Just keep in mind that in reality such trades in liquid securities happen in fractions of a second. Also note that we here as a market maker traded a pretty big volume of 3 buys and 3 sales right around $100 per order and yet our profit is only $6 which seems relatively small given the volume traded. However this is quite typical for market making strategies. You need a huge volume to generate a small but steady profit. This is also very typical for trading firms. For example consider XTX Markets one of the biggest forex market making firms. On their website, they advocate that they had an average daily trading volume of 250 billion US dollars, while in 2022 they generated a yearly profit of 1.5 billion USD, and this was a very good year for them. So, this demonstrates how the profit is really just a tiny fraction compared to the amount of volume that these firms trade. In conclusion, the basic strategy that market makers apply is come up with some fair value estimate of a product and trade around this. Here it is important to understand that the market maker mostly is a passive participant in the order book. Finally, a market maker reducing the width of a spread directly contributes to a reduction in other market participants' trading costs since crossing the spread now becomes much cheaper. This highlights the value that liquidity providers can add by reducing costs and ease of entering and exiting positions for other participants.